Optima 2 was a trial that looked at response adaptive de escalation in patients with HPV positive head and neck cancer. Of course, patients with HPV positive disease have favorable outcomes, but the standard multimodality therapy can be quite toxic. And so there's been a great amount of interest um, in de-escalation in particular. Our previous trial at University of Chicago looked at response-adaptive de-escalation called Optima 1, which had quite favorable results. And so this trial tried to build on that by adding anti-PD-1 therapy uh, to the induction chemotherapy backbone to try to further deepen the response and thereby facilitate further de-escalation of, of treatment. Um, the way the trial worked is patients received three cycles of chemoimmunotherapy with nivolumab, carboplatin, and nab paclitaxel. And then based on their baseline risk, as well as based on their response to treatment, they received uh, either low-dose radiation alone or uh, surgery or intermediate dose uh, chemotherapy with radiation or regular dose chemotherapy and radiation. What we found is that overall, the survival outcomes were quite excellent in the overall cohort with two-year progression fee survival of 90% and two-year overall survival of 93%, which uh, is quite impressive, especially considering the fact that our trial, unlike a number of other de-escalation trials, it includes patients with high-risk HPV disease, heavy smokers, patients with T4 tumors, and patients with more advanced nodal disease as well. One other interesting thing that we found in our study was that in the small subset of patients, the nine patients that underwent surgery after chemoimmunotherapy, there was a very high pathologic complete response rate of 67%. And none of the patients who had uh, trans oral robotic surgery required uh, post-operative radiation as well. Um, and so this is, this is also a quite exciting uh, finding. Um, you know, in terms of big picture, um, obviously de-escalation trials need to be evaluated in a randomized setting before uh, being able to be applied in, in clinical practice. But I think response adaptive de-escalation has quite promise. And in particular, this may have a role for anti-PD-1 in the curative setting, which, which so far has, has not been defined.